morning, everyone. So it was a very interesting and insightful presentation. So we are going to have a very sharp and short uh, fire chat about the secret ingredients and customer experience. But maybe first, can you introduce yourself very quickly? Okay, start. I would say ladies <laughs> first, but okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, so hello, I'm Marina Luca, working for Sergei, 20 years of digital uh, in telco, retail, non-pharma, and for the past few years at Sergei, and happy to be with you to share experience. Hello everyone, my name is Natalia Andrychuk, I am CEO of the Zevan company. We are working with uh, pharmaceutical companies for 15 years almost, producing content, delivering the platforms, making sure like we can cut the way our wording is arriving to our customers. So great to be here. Thank you. Uh, Adela Schultz, I am working for um, UCB Pharma as a European strategy and um, operations um, lead, leading the customer experience omnichannel space. Um, I also uh, initially came from outside of pharma, so I started in e-commerce uh, for a company that belongs to Center Parks, B2C, so I was basically negotiating uh, cost per click rates and impressions rates on the phone. It was not that long ago. And then over FMC and eventually I joined the, the, the pharma side. And yeah, very pleased to be here and to meeting you all. Great. So I will introduce myself later because I will be on stage many more times. So let's, let's get started. A, a very nice and interesting title, Secret Ingredients. So first of all, say a bit, what do we mean by secret <laughs> ingredients? And what have you seen evolving over time? Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a very great question and very a great panel to be a part of. Like, what is the uh, most uh, recent secret ingredients? Um, you know, we are at Visevon, we are connected to customers' content. And uh, I would say, like, it is a connection which we're building today. It is not uh, uh, about content for content, mm. like uh, multiplying of the messages through the different channels. It is really building the connection. So one of the secret, uh, secret ingredients is the connection we're building today with our customers through different means. And one of them is content which is com completely tiring our intentions, our message through the data travel from the beginning to the and to the customer. So this is uh, this is my intake. Uh, what do you think, Carolina? I, I actually obviously agree. <laughs> uh, and maybe start with what Dario said earlier today. She said maybe the secret is that not really secret, yeah. but just the way to basic back to basic approach of omnichannel being including digital and human. And maybe the key points like uh, taking back the the what the how the who is first understand who we are want to talk to and the who and through data, as Natalia was saying, we actually can even more precise and be able to answer, give the right need, the right content to either the HEP or the patient. And then the key, I mean, I guess, going back to the content is the core. What's the brand strategy? What's the content being promotional or medical that we need to have as a core, valuable and qualitative mm -hmm. delivery, either through digital or human, and obviously the how through the channels. And that's exactly the whole experience, no matter the where or the how, to be able to deliver that uh, to our customers. Adele? So, I asked a friend. It's a friend that I'm um, recently interacting uh, with on an almost everyday basis several times. ChatGPT. So, ChatGPT <laughs> said it's about, one, active listening, personalization, quick problem resolution, and the seamless journey across touch points, tailoring interactions to individual needs is key. So, you know, back to your point, it's all about simplicity actually, going back to basics. And what I just mentioned is typically, you know, what a good sales representative, what a good key account manager is doing anyway. It's really going back to basics, right? We just need to do the same in a more complex environment where we have, you know, a very cross-functional team typically, where we have the commercial field force, the medical field force, access function becoming unbelievably important. And then, of course, across all our other channels. But it's really keeping these <clears throat> basics in mind and so not overcomplicating with fancy words to Dar Dario's point at the beginning. Yes, uh, you want to react? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> if, if I may to add to this, yes, we have to go to the basics 
So, um, you know, like uh, where we started to produce a, a lot of messaging like 15 years ago, there was a lot about how many people are working on your content and what type of the digital content factory do you have. And that was one type for all. It was a human type. As Adela just mentioning, there is new brands on the horizon like OpenAI and the others. So what, what we need to, to mean by the basics? The basics today is the ability, first of all, to have the hybrid digital content factory where you are working as well with the technology, your best friends, as well with the people. The other thing is, like we, we while producing the content, we were in the past focused on the third party systems where the content will be traveling. Today, we need to focus on more things like we need to focus on one single source of truth, on the data model of our customer, make sure like our content inherited the right data model, which our customer decides that this is the single source of truth, not the other vendors otherwise. Then we need to have, while creating content, a very good recognition system, which is a part of the strategy with the uh, large language model where we recognize every bit and pieces of the content. The content is not monolithic. If you take any, like we are talking about modular, but module has mm -hmm. the atomic pieces today. And with the technology, we have been talking about technology earlier, we must be able to recognize every atomic piece, let me say, and tag it automatically inside our technology system, which is a DCF digital content factory for us, then the travel really begins and then we are able to put more data, more tagging on your campaign in the planners and then we can start whatever system you want to use in the world, your data will be traveling in harmony and you will receive the very important impact uh, um, insights from your customers because being a patient, I'm sorry to take too, too long time, I just want to say <laughs> like, I, I, I do appreciate today's, uh, today's speech about how important to take this uh, satisfaction criteria from the patients directly. That's why web is one of the most important channels today. Definitely, maybe one of the key points after what we just said is how to basically use the technology because that's out there and we need to be like the, as excellent as the medical scientific part to be in the experience to make it simple. Do yeah. not, the, the key point is like everything is complex in the way we're building the capabilities, the technology, the tagging. Mm -hmm. That's not the sexy part, obviously. But that at the other, the, the delivery, the experience that either a pharma company or anyone like yeah. interacting with the HCP but should feel that it's easy to understand and that you get the proper qualitative answer. Uh, maybe a provocative question here because uh, we started by mm -hmm. saying at the end it's going back to basics. There's nothing new. Uh, seemingly there is a bit of new, but <laughs> in the past we've been talking about customer centricity, patient centricity, is this the new buzz buzzword, customer experience? Actually, we had this discussion with Dario like uh, when preparing and we said <laughs> that 10 or 15 years ago, it was new like in telco, banking, FMCG. I mean, like we were like maybe like 15 years ago yeah. back to that. Today, it's like mandatory. It's like uh, something that we have to address just because the old way is not efficient enough and it's not the proper way to deliver what we need to give as messages for the portfolio approach, brand approach, marketing or medical approach. So I would, I would say that the mindset mm. I think is definitely what, mm. what remains the biggest challenge in pharma. And I really, um, I think it was Julien from Teva, right? I couldn't agree more with um, a number of statements that were made by him. So, so specifically having, um, having the executive leadership buy-in, the buy-in of the middle management. Um, if you have an executive that for whom, you know, the transformation is all about platforms and you speak customer experience, you know, you're, you're just completely misaligned. So, so that's, I guess, really far more specific because your point, um, I remember when I, when I started in outside, so in, in tourism, B2B, in, in, in key account management, it was a foundation. So I was 25 years back then. It was foundational to understand that it all starts with your customer, B2B. You need to understand your key accounts. You need to understand what their uh, main business priorities are, business challenges, and how you adapt your value proposition to, to respond to that. 
So we need to find a way, and I guess maybe pharma didn't have the same constraints because of our different business model, but clearly we need to go back there. And if we have the mindset, if we have this alignment with our executive leadership around wanting to become a customer-centric organization, which indeed um, has quite some impact. So again, what Julian was saying, that does require to review um, commercial operating models, marketing operating models, to create frameworks that are showcasing the new direction. If you do that, the rest will come. So I don't want to say that technology is easy, but it is easier. Yeah, and uh, we, we, have, we have to be also <coughs> focused on the patients, and the patient programs are different nowadays. I, I was attending one uh, more event in uh, Zurich, like uh, last month on the uh, patient centricity as well, and there was a very bright example. So we all saw, like today, uh, there are a couple of wars in, in the world, like I'm from Ukraine, there is a war in Ukraine, there, uh, there are other wars around the world where the patients not need only the support, the traditional support about the drugs which they are taking in their medication. They have to receive the support on the other side. Like um, uh, there was, I think uh, there was a Roche example while the war outbreak in, in Ukraine, the Roche team, support team was connected directly to Ukrainian patients, oncology patients. And they were not only providing the information they were providing the where the next closest clinic where they can receive the treatment how they can continue if they are on their drugs the treatment so how they how they can how they can uh, survive not only surviving uh, um, uh, through the disease but also surviving means uh, physical surviving so that's that's uh, how the patient centricity must work and uh, today we have heard uh, already that um, pharma is able to create an ecosystem around the patient which is adjust and uh, agile so which can change uh, if it is needed because geopolitical situation in the world is uh, that uh, no nobody knows what will be required next so that means we need to be more agile and the content need to travel faster than it travels today so that's yeah. all connected so, so Time is flying, so I, oh, I want to ask yeah. a question to Adela and, and Marina. It's, it's about how are you driving in your respective organizations this customer experience? Because you mentioned that there is a lot of alignment needed from the top up to, to deep in the organization. So what advice can you give based on your experience in making that happen? I guess go first. Uh, I was going to take your mindset <laughs> <laughs> to make it as a priority from the top to everyone and not just as a buzzword, as Alexandre was saying earlier, to say, because everybody's so committed, we should do it. And then I guess maybe two different parts being obviously to make sure that this so-called omnichannel strategy or omnichannel interactions are basically capability, where it could be like people, skills, we're talking about uh, recruitments, upskilling, and the people that are actually in the right place to deliver the technical capabilities as we were saying, to make sure that we have the full path to make sure that we actually have the tools connecting at the data to actually see and deliver the right thing. And then obviously then the always on iterative content creation, adaptation to the market specificity, where not actually the only channel allows us to be flexible and adapt to whatever the political context can be, the market, the legislation to be able to adjust Mm -hmm. based on the different <coughs> countries and the different uh, needs for patients in each of them. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm citing again Julian. But I, I was listening to this presentation. It's exactly sort of the approach that, that we are taking. But uh, to, to add, uh, to add some, maybe some words to that. Um, so also my role, the move of my role was part of our approach. So I used to be um, digital uh, business transformation strategy and capability lead until about a year and a half ago. And then my position moved into the franchise. So I'm now part of the rheumatology franchise where I am uh, working on enabling uh, some major launches that are happening as we speak in our rheumatology franchise and to um, work on making the you know, the exotic new ways of working, hopefully not exotic anymore, uh, to really embed them into the day-to-day -day practice. And I have to say it is an ongoing 
yep. an, an ongoing challenge, but the approach is indeed threefold. So you work, so the mindset part, collaborating with a wider organization on um, facilitating this customer centricity, which you know is, is a long way. So even the fact that even if you now have a launch, you will not just talk about product, 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 um, because that's simply now how you do things, but it's really going to, you know, from product to service, creating the mindset, offering, you know, not just your products, but the medical education that your, your uh, stakeholders expect and so forth. So, so mindset, the skill set is very important in terms of um, knowing how to um, do a customer segmentation that is not just based on the traditional. So it's very important to do the traditional segmentation, which is based on, on potential winability and so forth, but also looking at the uh, psychometric um, elements. So what type of customers do you have in front of you? In this case, I'm talking about prescribers. What are their pain points? What are their needs? Um, looking at past engagement patterns, what type of content do they like to engage with? What type of channels do they like <coughs> to engage with? Um, and then, and that's an, of course, not a one-off thing. So then having the skill set on an ongoing basis, set up customer journeys that are gathering insights at every touch point and also using those insights. And then last but not least, so we covered mindset, skill set, tool set, um, is to have a unique um, customer ID that actually, you know, from a very practical perspective, allows you to connect the dots across what yep. the customers are doing <clears throat> across channels, um, having a customer data platform, um, and, um, and really this ability to indeed, you know, capture the data across channels and then not just having it out there, but making sense out of big data, so accessing it and leveraging it. Which was bringing us to the last point, how to measure it. So but we do not have sufficient <laughs> time to deep dive in that. I want to thank you, the three of you, of you three passionate ladies, very clearly. <laughs> uh, and I think now, Dari, it's time for the break. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.